All right, I'm back again. It is November 4th, and last night they finally announced the governor of New Jersey who's going to be winning that. I'm the Democrat incumbent, I believe it was. Uh, he was an incumbent, and I don't remember names. I've tried to remember names, but I've had uh, one of those days where the stress level at work has been off the charts, and... I'll leave it at that, but I've, I've, there's several names that I've tried, been trying to remember, and I'm bad at names anyway. But uh, he barely squeaked by, and they thought it was going to be a blowout. So I'm going to kind of discuss my, put my political science cap on, and try and do a little bit of an analysis on the election. This will be very interesting, I think. There is, you know, when I'm looking at how the parties are responding and everything, there is a very clear winner and a very clear loser, and the loser's being quite sore about it and I think making matters worse. Going into this election, and I'll, I'll try to have some links down below, but going into this election, I think there are a lot of people that were saying that this will show the future. This is going to show what things will be like in 2022 and even in 2024, especially with, with Virginia. This is going to be proof. And it is fair that, that I can agree with that. Because the things that are going on right now are things that are dealing with subject matters that it's it's just going to take a while to get straightened out and get back to some resemblance of normal. And so, yeah, that's definitely the case. Now, there are also some people saying that this is an indictment on, or a referendum, rather, on the, the Biden administration. To an extent, yes. But there were a lot of heavy hitters on the Democrat Party out there. And so, I think it was not 100% of referendum on the Biden administration, but uh, on Democrat policies as a whole, which kind of would encompass the Biden administration, because he's kind of like the figurehead of the party. That's how I'm looking. And when I put my mindset on that and I look at the results, I'm not just talking at the governor level, but some of the local levels. Um, like for Virginia to flip like they did and pick up, for the Republicans to pick up as many state legislature seats as they did, that's pretty telling. For the New Jersey governor seat to be racist to be as close as it was, that's pretty telling. For especially for a Republican to be that close to unseating an incumbent, then you had what was it the the president, some sort of president in New Jersey, longtime incumbent thought was going to blow it out was beat by a truck driver who spent one hundred and thirty five dollars on his campaign. There were, see, a few other seats, long time held by Democrats that were flipped. Four in New York, which is a little surprising. Uh, I think it was 50 in uh, Virginia. Uh, yeah. And I saw there were quite a few in Texas, including, uh, I think, I saw somewhere, I think Greg Abbott said it was in San Antonio area. Uh, I'm not from Texas, never been to Texas. I know some people who do live down there. It's my understanding that the big metropolitan areas, and I'm like Dallas, Fort Worth, and I believe San Antonio tend to be fairly left-leaning. So for 
And if that, that is the case, if those areas, especially San Antonio, were to pick up a few right of center legislators, that's telling me something's up there. Um, especially when you step back and look at it all. Another thing to look at is I saw somewhere where uh, minority votes were up for the Republican Party. Uh, in the, somewhere in the 12 to 14 percent range, uh, depending, of course, where you were, and the minority group you're referring to, but it's in that range. That's trend not high as high as it was under Trump. The, this uh, last his last election because he was up in the 15 to 17 percent, depending on everything. But when you look at what it was when McCain or Romney, when it was more like eight percent. That's trending upward, and that is very much a positive thing. It's looking as though Republicans are finally starting to reach out and get, make some headway in reaching minority voters. They've got a long way to go. I'm not going to lie. They've got a very long way to go. And they're going to have to work on that if they want to remain viable at a national level. No ends or buts about it. They're going to have to reach minorities and they're going to have to start finding ways to connect with the youth. Democrats have done a better job at doing that. Um, and, yeah, especially, I'm going to say this. Republicans with the lieutenant governor of Virginia, that her name Winsome. That's one of the names I can't remember. That's hitting it out of the park. You need to elevate people like that. I mean, a Jamaican immigrant who fought in the military, worked her butt off to become a citizen and second command of a state, that's a big deal. That's a good way to win over minority votes is to elevate people like that. So congratulations on that. Uh, congratulations to her and her accomplishments. I don't know anything about her. I know some people in Virginia and they are quite excited. So I'm excited for her. Now, when I look at the winners and the losers, Definite winner and loser. The winner, definitely Republicans. I'm not going to hold that up. I'm not going to hold that back. They definitely not did, you know, they exceeded all expectations on every single front. Even the races they lost, for the, the big ones at least, were closer than anyone imagined they would be. Minority votes are up over what they were, you know, four or five years ago. If they can capitalize on that, definitely, that's a good thing. Especially if I'll pull that up. You know, and I'm not going to say they need to leave it at that. They need to continue to work on it. They can pat themselves on the back. They can strut around. They made some headway. They still need to work on that. They can't sit back. They need to continue to work on minority voter outreach and the youth outreach. They got to get to them. They got to find a way to communicate with them. The losers most definitely are the Democrats because they lost some things they weren't supposed to lose and almost lost some they definitely weren't supposed to lose. They are not handling it well. Like in Virginia, they're, they claimed racism. It's kind of hard to claim racism when those self-same self Republicans were pushing for a lieutenant governor who is a minority group, but they're trying it. Also, another way to tell 
how did Biden handle it? He canceled everything. Came back from Europe early, canceled everything. They are not handling this well in the public lot at this time at least. And this was very much a referendum on their policies. You know, they came out and they were talking about $450,000 for immigrants separated at the border and they said, no, that's not the case because that was not popular. But look at some of the other things that they're, they've been pushing at the state level and at the federal level. And Virginia was one on the forefront on some of them, especially on education and a lot of mandates that they were hoping they would get to put kind of use Virginia as the model for and push on the national level. It didn't work at all. You know, it's pretty telling that a lot of Democrats didn't go for it. And maybe it's just gas prices are up, food prices are up, um, unemployment's not going down. You know, these are things that are not going to be changing anytime soon. Even if they don't add a crap ton to the national debt. Even if... What have you. Even if they suddenly become... Both sides suddenly become fiscally responsible. It's not going to change for a while. Inflation is going to be around for a while. Unemployment's going to be high for a while. But it's going to take time for the market to correct itself. And... So, the appropriate thing for the Democrats to have done would be to say, we understand this is happening, what we're going to do, we understand because of this, some of the policies we're pushing are not wanting to push, are not that po popular. We're going to fall back and punt. We're going to reimagine them, redraw them, what have you, to see what we can do to change things up. That would be the appropriate uh, reaction. Instead, they are doubling down. We're going to push it through anyway. That's not the sign. That's loser thought in my mindset. If you have a significant portion of the population saying no, or in this case not no, but hell no, and they want to push it through anyway, that's that's not a good no that's not a healthy mindset to have if you want to have success See, this is very telling not going to lie there's a lot more things I could say there's a lot of things I was thinking of last night as I was getting ready to go to bed and it's like I'll remember him tomorrow I didn't let me know what you think. Like I said, I'll try to have some good links down below. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of either party, but I've got to admit, the Republicans seem to be trying to fix their image and switch things around, and they are doing better. I don't think in 2021 and going into 2022 running on the platform of orange man bad is going to work especially when poopy pants biden isn't knocking it out of the park in anyone's eyes and the only other option would be get rid of him and replace him with who i refer to as horse face harris who is even more unlocked so yeah this is I don't usually go to name calling, but I've had a crappy day. Let me indulge in this a little bit. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough, way longer than I should. It's going to take forever for this booger to upload, so later.